Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the Crossfade Master and the different ways it can be used to control the rate of various things throughout your show. The configuration of the master and its buttons can be done through setup, view settings, and the playbacks tab. Here you'll see two boxes for the Crossfade Master, both the master itself being the fader and the button, and the different things we can make it do. We have several options here for the fader. First one is the manual crossfade master. With manual crossfade set, it's going to control the crossfade from queue to queue within the selected fader. So if we turn up our queue stack here, and then to activate the manual crossfade fader, so it's not always active, we've made it so that you either have to hold the S button or hold shift and then move the crossfade fader. It's going to say pickup down here in the command line. What that means is that this fader is out of place versus where this queue is, and it's going to ask us to push the fader up, hence the little arrow key. Push the fader up. And it's going to latch onto the queue. Now that it says manual down here, we're now latched to this playback, in this case, playback two. And just like turning on the fader controls manual crossfade option in the playback options, we can now manually crossfade. From Q to Q, we can stop in the middle and go back and forth. And when we hit 100% or 0%, we're going to establish ourselves in the next queue. So a really easy way to get a nice smooth timed transition manually from Q to Q on your selected playback. The next option is Rate Master. A Rate Master is going to control the rate of things like chases and effects within the currently selected queue. To show that it's only working on the currently selected queue, I'm gonna turn a little circle effect on here. We currently have our playback two, which is our chase. We'll set this to be chase timing and hit go on it. And you'll see because I have the fader all the way up, it's going a million miles an hour as I bring it down. Zero is 100%, that would be the programmed value within the queue. And as you bring it down more, it goes slower. Notice that at the time, the rate master is only controlling the currently selected playback. So my circle effect is not changing speed. If I switch over to my other Q stack here with my effect, you see, now I'm controlling the circle effect and not our chase. Again, 50% of the fader is 100%. One thing that changes when you're in a rate master is the functions of the fast forward and back fast back buttons. These become have and full time. So you'll see here down in the command line, we're at 98% right now, not quite hundred percent. As I move the fader, that percentage changes. But if I wanted to double time this current timing, I can hit the forward button. And you see, we jump to 178, 300, 700, so on. And if I hit the back button, it's going to half that time. So really handy for quickly speeding up or slowing down what you have going on. Again, the basic rate master is only going to control your currently selected playback. The next option we have here is the global rate master. This is going to control the rate of everything active in the desk as far as playbacks, both effects and chases, regardless of which one you have selected. So now with this at 78%, you'll see as I speed it up, both my circle effect and my chase speed up and slow down. So good when you want to have kind of a master for the desk's rate or speed. Our next option is the busking rate master. Busking rate master is very useful, especially for busking as the name implies. What it does is it allows you to specify a pallet timing based on the fader position from zero to 10 seconds. You'll see that our display down here has changed from a percentage to a time, signified by the S at the end. So if we leave this at zero seconds and we were to turn our spots on and start picking a palette, you'll see it'll snap. Now, of course, we can use our tank key and do things like the three star plus, three star minus syntax to do all the fancy fades. But if we just wanted a straight fade, we could push this fader up to something like, say, three seconds. And now when we pick our palette, you'll see that there's a permanent three second timing on all palette selections. Push it up higher, we'll get more time, bring it down, we'll get less time. 
So really good when you're doing things on the fly and using palettes. Great when you're using execute regions that have palettes in them so you can apply a permanent timing from zero to 10 seconds to your show. The next option we have is the QStack Rate Master. The QStack Rate Master is going to control the rate of chases, not effects within the queue. So if we were to put a circle effect on our fixtures here, we'll put them in a duller color so it's easier to see what's going on. And we were to merge this into our chase. We now have a chase with a position effect. You'll see that where before we had our rate masters controlling both effects and chases. If we go to Q stack rate master now, and we turn this up, it's only controlling the chase itself, leaving the effect alone. Global Q stack rate master is the same kind of thing. It's going to allow you to control just the chases, not the effects across the desk. You see, if we bring another effect up here, and we start bringing our QStack Rate Master up. Again, we're controlling only the chase with this. You see that the effects are not changing speed. The next option we have is the Club Master. The Club Master will add timing control for fade times and durations in the execute screen to what the Global Master, the Global Rate Master already does. This means if we were to turn on our circle effect up here in the execute screen, you'll see that we now have control of that if we bring that fader down and we were to put say a five second fade on our stage wash turn these off for now so we can see what we're doing because the club master controls timing within the execute screen as well as the q stacks if I turn on my stage wash with my five second timing with my fader to pull way down, you'll see this is a much longer than five second time within the execute screen. You'll see that if I push this up towards the top for faster timing, so we're now at 400% of the timing, we get a much faster than five second fade time. So the only major difference between the club master and the global rate master is it includes that timing control within the execute screen. If you wanted to exclusively control the execute screen and not have your master control your playbacks, you can make it what's called a test stack rate master. Playbacks that are enabled through the execute screen are considered what we call test playbacks, which means they're running in the background. So by turning this on, it means that we can turn on our chase. We can turn on our effect. And this fader will have no control over it. However, if we turn on an effect within the execute screen, there in a spot circle there, you'll see now our rate master controls the effect that is being played from the execute screen. So you have flexibility and options to say that this master only controls playbacks, or this master only controls the execute screen, or it controls both at the same time. It's up to you how you want to manage those times. The last two options are pretty straightforward. You have a submaster option, which allows the crossfade fader to become whatever the submaster is assigned to. This is for uh, smaller consoles that don't have a submaster fader. If you need one of the functions of what the submaster can do here, as far as being a master for various different pieces of the uh, desk, as far as ad swap, playbacks, programmer, presets, if you need one of those options, you can give up the Crossfade Master and its functions and apply the Submaster settings to the Crossfade Master, just to give you a little bit of flexibility if you're on a smaller desk that's missing that Submaster. And finally, just like the Grandmaster and Submaster, we can make this CS3, which basically means it's going to bind this fader, much like an execute screen fader, to whatever Q stack is stored on CS3. A very convenient thing to do if you don't plan on using the crossfade master for anything having to do with rates or the submaster functions. Maybe you can assign something like a hazer to it, and that becomes your hazer, permanent hazer handle because you've recorded your hazer at full in CS3. 
So look at the options we have for the buttons. We can obviously keep it as a go slash back, which means it's go and shift and hitting that button would be back. But then we can also set it to default. Default is going to change the function of that button based on what the crossfader is being told to do. So if it is a global rate or a club master, it becomes a tap to time button. If it's a rate or a busking master, it will tap for the selected playback. And for all their options, it will act as a normal go slash back button. We can force it to be either of those, go slash back or tap to time, or we can make it a global tap to time. If you're on one of the larger desks, an MQ500 that has the larger crossfade and submaster faders, you have options to do a theater split on those so you see that we can do stadium split here also if you wanted to split your crossfade so you had kind of an a b like an older theater style or scene style console you can split those between nine and ten stadium splits going to use the submaster and the crossfade master keep in mind when you do this you're giving up the use of your submaster to allow it to work with the crossfade master and then we can lock it to playback two or playback two and three there is a sacrifice with all of these options, so keep that in mind. If you set it to playback 9 and 10, you're going to lose playback 9 and 10 as actual playbacks. And then you can choose what the crossfader controls. <clears throat> in situations where you have it set to manual crossfade and potentially the big button set to go, there may be a time where you have a run of show where you want it to only ever control one specific playback. Say you had a volunteer running a theater stack style show, you might want to lock the crossfader to playback one, which is the stack for that show, and tell the volunteer to only use that big go button on the desk to advance the show. In doing so, we can lock the crossfade master to playback one. That means that it's just not going to follow or listen to where the blue bar is for what it's doing when it's controlling selected. It's always going to control again playback one, two, you have nine, 10, and 15. So a lot of flexibility there with just that one fader as to how you control the overall rate and timing of your show. It's all going to depend on your event and your rig and how you've programmed it. Some people prefer to have more or less control in that realm. Um, give them all a try. There's a good explanation of uh, all the different rate masters and how they work in section 16.4.14 of the manual. And I hope you found this useful. As always, you can find us at www.kansaslighting.com.